30 p.m. Afternoon rip delight here. Yeah. Afternoon delight 3250. Jason's working on some projects at J Concepts currently and podcasting and multitasking big time yep. here. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I was just describing a little bit as I got a I got a project list um, that I kind of ma- I I maintain I got several different lists, of course, but I I try to keep an updated project list of, you know, what's ongoing, uh, you know, what's going on right now, uh, what is in the queue, and what's a possibility. Uh, So I I try to keep this somewhat organized and, you know, who's working on it and where it's at and what class is it for. I hope you didn't schedule too much stuff for me to do next week. Mm, I don't know. We could. Who's that? Who's that in the background? Oh. That's my mom. She just came oh, in. Oh, hi, mom. Rona. Oh, you see me? Yeah. Oh, that's not good. That's all right. <laughs> this isn't live or even recorded. Have you ever seen Marley? Check out Marley. Hi, Marley. Where's Jazzy? I knew he was there. Tell him I wouldn't wear my makeup. Jazzy's at home. Marley gets to come into the shop. Jazzy... Jazzy got reduced. Oh. All right, I'll see you later. I'm going to do some stuff and then I'm going to go. Okay. Oh, I'm not going to be here Monday or Thursday. Yeah, I saw your message. Instant message. It's first cameo by Mom Rona. Mm hmm. Reese. Yeah, so we, I decided to uh, make a trip with Fred. Up to Missouri, he had, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of a side story, but we sold, or I sold Bigfoot 4 to Fred a couple years ago. He brought it back up to Missouri so they could work on doing a restoration of it. And a lot of work there, but what he was doing is bringing a front clip for the truck a uh, fiberglass front clip up there so they could kind of continue doing um, continue doing some work in the truck. So mm. I figured, well, we could take the van. We could bring the race gear. Uh, they had a Trigger King event going on um, in the area, so I felt like, all right, we'll go up. Uh, we'll bring the stuff for the big truck. And then we'll do some racing. So, so a 16, 16 hour drive there. Oof. Uh, we did a couple days there and actually got a lot done. Got a lot of stuff done there. And then we did the race too. So, I'm pretty happy with the trip. It was a good trip. Yeah. So, you know, the drive is a little bit of a drag, but I mean, I didn't actually drive myself so how many hours did you drive zero (laughs) that's that's what the boss does zero so i did zero driving but uh you know so i had my phone and stuff i could do with work i could make a video which i did um got a got a couple definitely got a lot of stuff done and got some good racing in i'm pretty excited about about uh, how everything went you know, I, what's funny about the trip is uh, it's kind of been a while since I've made that kind of a trip, but I used to go that direction a lot with uh, with my dad. Um, you know, back in the day, we used to go go that way to go to Michigan. 
November, I would go up there with them to go hunting. And then when I, when I was really young, I would go that way. I would go that way in the summer also. So, uh, so it's funny kind of going back up the same roads and seeing, uh, you know, a lot of these similar sites that I remember seeing uh, when I was younger. So, uh, you know, going up through the mountains and, in Tennessee, go through Chattanooga, Tennessee, and then you climb the big, climb the mountain, come down. And it was good. We had a, it was kind of reminisce there a I little bit. Say. Yeah, some memories there. Hunting, some, man, what'd you, what'd you hunt? Whitetail deer. How many did you bag? Is that the, is that what the hunters say? Bag? I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I never shot anything. I went once when I was 12 years old, and that was it. I would, never went back again. One time. That was it. That's all it took, huh? It was freezing. Stood mm-hmm. out there for four hours. Didn't see mm-hmm. a damn thing. And uh, my grandfather took me out. He was all pumped up to take me out and excited. And I turned 12 years old, got my license. And uh, he thought he was going to groom me into a hunter. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> Never ever doing this again and uh you're like kept my promise can you can you <laughs> can you groom me into a gamer not a yeah. hunter well the thing is i did i went right back and you know after staying out there for four hours i went inside and just played atari i was like i'm done with this man never never went back and i got all the gear like you know you got to get all the orange and everything and oh yeah got the lights you know and just never went back again. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not a big fan of the country either. And I lived in the country. Really? Yeah, I'm just not a fan of it. I talked about it on the show before. I kind of despise it because uh, I felt it like kind of robbed me of my childhood somewhat because a lot of my friends lived in town. They were, get the, they were able to do stuff together, hang out, while I was stuck like 15 miles over the mountain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, out in the woods, nobody came visit me. It's like, oh, uh... yeah, no friends. Sort of like today, really, no friends. I'm in town yeah, now. Everything's just, it's just kind of the same, right? Yeah, I'm in town now, but no friends. No, yeah. it's funny how that works. <laughs> there's, you know, some people would say there's one common denominator. <laughs> oh man i got this new i got this new knife the other day this milwaukee look at this thing oh, be you know it's when, when you're working it you know in, in the warehouse and you gotta open boxes jesus you gotta have you gotta have a great knife you know nice utility knife here yeah that looks like it could cut you up pretty fast <laughs> it's just for cutting boxes can you see this in the camera, Jason? Wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, Your uh, thumbs up. You can't see the scar there. A little bit. Right there. Lower. Oh, shit. Well, anyway, it was from one of those knives. Really? Yeah, I So it closed up. on you. I was, uh, I was holding something like this right here, and I was cutting down. Stu- real, real dumb, first of all. You should be going away from you. But I was mm-hmm. going like this. So my thumb was here, this one. And mm. I was cutting. Down. Yeah. Mm. And my daughter even said, and, you know, she's like, uh, you're going to cut yourself doing that. And I'm like, yeah. And then all of a sudden, I was putting pressure on it. it slipped. <laughs> sliced the thumb wide open. S- same type of knife. Yeah. And it was just flapping everywhere. And it was blood just squirting all over the place, dude. It's terrible. Hmm. So be careful with that knife, Jason. I will. <laughs> so yeah, that in the hunting I did with my dad, I, I, I liked to go. I liked all the equipment. I liked the clothes, the equipment, the you know everything. But <laughs> you like the equipment <laughs> part. <laughs> but I didn't like. I didn't want to really shoot anything. Um, I had the opportunity when I was you know in the the hunting blind with mm. my dad or whatever. It's like, but yeah, 
Yeah, just going out. I think going out in the woods, just hanging out, uh, if it wasn't so cold, I guess would yeah. be all right. Yeah. But I, I do remember I just got really bored. Just, you know, he's like, oh, you got to stand over here. I'm going to go stand over there. And you're just going to have to be very quiet and, and wait, you know. And mm-hmm. I just got bored and I wanted to fire the damn gun. So I just shot it in a direction. And then he came back later on. He's like, did you see something? I'm like, yeah, I saw something over there by the woods. There for moving. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just fired a, fired a warning shot across her nose. I just shot it. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I just remember aiming it and shooting it up towards the sky. I just wanted to fire a gun and make, you know, yeah, yeah, I saw something over there. He's like, man. Wasn't like, orange. This, <laughs> he's like, this kid is going to be something. Never he's already again. firing off. Yeah. That was after three hours of standing there. And it's like, oh my God, this is boring. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, I, I did see photos of you dressed up there and you post them on Instagram. Mm-hmm. In your hunting gear. Hmm. Yeah, I never really shot anything. You know, just what my dad did <laughs> when I was there. I remember us being in a in a blind. This is in 1989, and uh, I mean, this. I'm just, you know, like you said, you sit there super quiet. Yeah, and you're like, and then when you see something. Yeah. or a deer's coming in, you just feel like they can hear everything then. It just, like, when you're, like, moving your eyes, you, like, swallow, you're just like, oh, I bet you they heard that. Like, you know, it's like you just, you just, they're so tentative and going by their senses that you feel like they can, uh, they're hearing or seeing all this stuff. And I think there's lots of times when they do, but... Yeah. um you know what? It, it was it was fun, and I remember being there, and all of a sudden, my dad shoots, and I'm just like, I mean, I didn't even have my gun up. I'm, I'm just watching this deer. <laughs> I'm just, you know, it's like I'm just like a spectator, and yeah. this this great this great buck is coming in, and I'm just like watching like a spec like it's a TV show. You know, I'm just like, oh, this is cool. All of a sudden, the shot goes off, and I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Then you have to track track it and uh, yeah and had it it was mounted he had it mounted and uh, wow. it's really it's cool it's I mean it is a nice it's a very nice animal yeah. he's an eater too he he likes his venison uh, had plenty of venison back then for sure good stuff it was a good time so anyway. Uh, Doing that drive definitely reminded me a lot of, um, you know, doing that run and, yeah, driving and... and uh, a little tear in your eye. Yeah, yeah not really that so much, <laughs> but uh, it was a good day. This was going to what event? Trigger King? It, yeah, Trigger King Monster Truck event, uh, RC Monster Truck event. We had uh, Trigger King on the show. Yeah, we had Doug Welker. Episode 178. Yeah, it, it went well. Uh, event was, they had a lot of help out there, you know, putting these events on. You won something. I saw, you sent us a video of you winning a race. Yeah, I, I actually won quite a bit. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but Jason smoked them. No, no, it's, it's, it's hard. It is hard racing. Uh, it's not something that just you, like we talked about before, you know, we had Dan white on the last show. You can, you can beat anybody. You can lose to anybody, uh, in that monster truck racing. And because the runs are short, uh, there's no, you know, you single elimination. So when you get beat, you're out. So, uh, everything did go well all my vehicles you know there was no problems no issues other than i had to change a motor uh, in one of my trucks but you know between rounds which is tough you know the races are going and you don't really know when your next run is and you know time wise you don't know if it's 20 minutes or five minutes 
Uh, so, but I had to switch out a motor, got that done. And it, good thing I did because it, it would have been way too slow otherwise. Is it, um, is it hard to stand there? And, and like that video you sent me, you're just standing there on the ground, you know? Yeah. It seems like to me that would be a little bit difficult. Like it, being up on a driver's stand would be a little bit easier. The better perspective um, of it. But. We've done it a couple different ways so far. And mm. when we ran that Monster Jam World Finals in Orlando last year, they had a driver's stand. So you had to be on that stand when you drove, which was kind of natural for me coming from the off-road racing world. You could stand on that stand. and But... It almost gets more confusing when you have an option to stand somewhere because now you're like, okay, do you want to see the truck going away from you, coming at you? Do you want to stand in the corner? Um, which end do you want to be on? Do you want to be on sort of your finish, the finish um, turn? Do you want to be on your entry turn? So mm, with point. an option – now with an option like that, it almost becomes more confusing because you're a little all over the place in terms of where you want to be. So um, if everybody had to stand from the same spot, like a driver's stand, I think it would be a little easier. But when they actually get, when you have that option, it makes it tougher, I think. Um, and what I ended up doing is I wanted to see on one, because they switched layouts. We had two brackets of racing in each class, and they switched the layout. And one of the tracks, I wanted to see the truck either going away from me or coming at me for the jump section. Because on this racing, the, the other part that's tough is you have to hit all the ramps. So any, any jump there is, you can't miss a ramp. So there's a two second penalty, which, you know, in this, so in the whole race is only like eight seconds, you know, a two second penalty is like a lot. So, um, so you have to hit all your ramps. So that's ah, kind of a okay. big part of it is not, so there's a, uh, what they used to call in the real racing called a two and two rule, which was your two front tires have to impact the first thing. And then, um, then you have to stay two tires in contact with it the whole time. That was on the cars. That's how they used to uh, judge the old competition where if you were jumping over uh, cars, your two front tires had to impact either the first ramp or the first jump. And then um, if you're driving over a section, two tires have to maintain on that area. So, uh, so on this, your your tires uh, have to hit the ramps every time, and they're not really wide. You know, it's not like an RC track, uh, off road track where it's ten feet wide or eight feet wide. You're hitting a jump that's eight or ten feet wide. You know, in this, uh, it's only a couple feet wide. So that's why you want to know where your truck is, be, um, because you want to make sure you're hitting all the obstacles because if you don't hit one, then you're pretty much done. So you can't hit the corners. If you hit the corners, it's a two second, like on this track we're running at, uh, you couldn't hit the cones, uh, and flip them over or anything, hit the cones. That's a two second penalty. If you don't hit the ramp that you're supposed to be jumping, that's a two second penalty. So that's why they video every race so that, you can always go back if there's a question and watch the video. So, uh, so even though you cross, if you if you cross first, it doesn't mean you won. You gotta, yeah, you might have had even an infraction. Uh, you know, you might have missed a ramp or something like that. So that's why the where you stand becomes critical too, because um, you want to make sure you're lined up for those jumps. Yeah, that makes and, sense. Yeah, and the other thing that's becomes, I guess, a little more different or nerve wracking is when you're in a race that you think you have won. you know, you halfway through, you can kind of do a judgment and you're like, Oh, I think I got this one, but you start to say to yourself, okay, well, I really want to make sure that I hit these last two jumps without getting a penalty. Right. 
So you kind of back out of it a little bit, and then you make sure that you're lined up right. And sometimes you can make a mistake doing that. Uh, so you're you're kind of you're you're monitoring all these things while you're racing. You know, am I out front? Uh, what kind of lead do I have, if anything? Do I want to take it easy to make sure I hit the last jumps and not have any penalties? Because, you know, if the guy is just a little bit behind you, but you have a penalty when you're kind of have a good lead, then he's going to beat you on the penalty. So there, it's a lot going on. And uh, so a lot of things you kind of have to monitor in your in your head while you're driving. And I think that's what's kind of neat about it. I guess I wouldn't. I guess I wouldn't be good at this then. I was like, oh, man, I don't know. I could do this. But if there's penalties like that, oh, boy. Well, you can, of course, you can practice. <laughs> practice. I mean, there's nothing saying that you can't get better. Yeah. Right? I don't know. <laughs> Though, that, like I was telling you in the chat, that, that looks like that would be my type of racing today. Yeah, probably would. So what I was saying is I did end up winning... Um, each bracket that we raced, but they're very close races. You know, when the whole thing is only whatever it is, eight seconds or something, they're always really close races and you don't have, uh, you don't have a lot of room for error, if any. And, and you're going up with going up against guys that, that do this all the time, right? Yeah. This is like a club that uh, they race every month. Yeah, and, uh, and you're still going out there. You're doing this like basically part time. Mm-hmm. And you're going out there and you're uh, doing good. Damn. Yeah. I mean, uh, over the years, I've obviously um, been fortunate to do a lot of RC and a lot of racing. And I've, I've always been good at driving the cars. Um, I'm not the best. I'm not a world champion, but I'm always uh, really good at it. Mm-hmm. And it's that's the only thing that you can rely on that you you can drive but then then it becomes a, a lot of things to think about you can't just be in all racing if you're just a good driver but you don't think out you know what's going on or like we talked about earlier you know you could you could get a um you could have a rule infraction or yeah. you just you just think you're going to blow somebody out on the track and you go for it way too much and you get a penalty and I mean, it's, there's all kinds of things that can happen uh, that you kind of have to monitor. So that's, what's kind of cool about it. They had their best turnout they've ever had there. They had, uh, I think 150 trucks, um, which, uh, which is good. They had their biggest bracket ever, which they just put up. um, They actually just put up the, um, the YouTube video of the whole bracket of uh, sport mod bracket one uh so these guys uh they do a good job with this so then uh paul Wynn was racing some touring car he got a good offer from felix felix law to oh. drive one of his um one of his cars at the regionals so he went down to the Roar regionals in florida and uh, he did well uh, he got third i think Felix won, Dave Vera second, Paul got third, and Paul was driving one of our we've had several touring car bodies now. You know, we have seems like <laughs> seems like the new bodies come out all the time for that class, but he's got like our third generation body that he's been working on that he wanted to get on the track a couple more times and he, he does well, so uh, obviously he got a really good got a good car from felix and, and i mean obviously even when paul works on his own car the the difference is, is since associated i don't know that we've actually ever talked about this but um, associated kind of i don't really know what the right word is they're not making on-road cars anymore okay i don't think they're making any on-road racing cars anymore so paul Really, if he wants to race touring car, he has the option to race any car that he wants. And, you know, Felix gave him a great offer uh, to drive one of his cars, so he's doing that. I know it's Rick Howard, who obviously works at Associated. He's in, um, 
he's in the same position as Paul. He rake works at Associated, but he works for he's obviously the head of Reedy. Uh, he likes on road, and he was driving a, I believe, an Osmatics car. This is it. You got this up in the chat. That's pretty tiled. Yeah, I'm just playing around with this. Yeah, so this is. Uh, yeah, so Rick Hoer, I think he raced uh, recently. Ran some some on road. Ran the Osmatics touring car and. Uh, the car Felix has, he had an extra serpent touring car. So, uh, he was running that and those guys had a good weekend. We got some guys right now heading out to, well, they're there right now. They, you know, one of the big races over the years in California had always been the hot rod shootout. That was at hot rod hobbies in a Saugus, California, but what recently on well, the past couple of years, I mean, it used to be a 500 entry race, 400 entry race, 500 entry race. And the people were not wanting to come out and run the outdoor race near as much. So Jimmy Babcock decided to have, uh, <laughs> have this race at a different track other than his own, which was indoor. So now it's called the Hot Rod Shootout, but it's indoors. And Mayfield's there uh, with Joe Pillars, and uh, we got Brock Champlin there. And we got some good drivers uh, racing at that race. And it's the first time Mayfield's run a uh, – he's ran a couple semi-small regional events, club races, whatever, but this is this kind of the first decent-sized race he's ran since March. So it should be interesting to see how it kind of plays out. And he's there right now. I saw Joe posted a little video of him running. So pretty neat. So we got, got him and Brock and Blake and some other drivers out there at this track in Bakersfield. So you can see here, I don't know if you're watching, you're watching your video here at all, but yeah, I think this is actually, yeah, this is me right here on the left power wheels. This is before I changed the motor. So I realized after this race, I was like, why is this thing so slow? And you're supposed to run a 17 turn motor. But what I remembered is oh, I was at home. We were here at the shop. I had AJ put a 27 turn motor in it. Mm. And we got here to the event and I was like, man, I go, this thing feels slow. And between this round as the first round, is this you? Also? 50, tri- 50, yeah. no. Oh, no, no, this no, is 56 no. trucks, 56 trucks total in this, this, this class. Okay. And that's, that's the first round. So that after that first round race there, I was like, holy cow. Um, I'm like, man, this, like, I don't have enough power. So I borrowed a motor from Cheech. His name is Cheech. He gave me a 17th turn motor. I put it in there and I was like, okay, this feels a little more normal. So you can see here in the videos, I, I'm taking it a little bit easy. It's it's uh, It's got a decent amount of power, but I'm kind of taking it easy until I get into a race where you really have to drive a little harder. And We had a good race. So this is the middle mid-range class that's called uh, Sport Mod. Okay. So you have to use oh. brushed, a brushed motor. Yeah. The guy took out this the tires. Hit, <laughs> yeah, this is Danny taking out everything. <laughs> he hit. Me. He hit two cones. Hit two cones. Missed one ramp. He's already got six seconds of penalties. Okay. <laughs> wow. No, it's it's really easy to do that. Oh, well, we got a good question here. Uh, Mike Sorchi, how can we do less qualifying and more racing in one tenth scale? Reedy Race does this for the invite classes, but what about everybody else? Uh, so yeah, I mean that's obviously kind of a, the age old question. Everyone seems to bring that up from time to time that they enjoy the actual racing more than qualifying. Get rid of Ifmar. Uh, qualifying. 
Well, that's the simple thing. And it's the best thing. That would be the simple answer is you <laughs> is you don't qualify all on uh, separate clocks. You only qualify on one clock. Uh, that would be the easy thing to do. But it won't go well. It won't go over well with the pros, right? It doesn't. I personally, people ask for this, but I don't know if they know what they're asking for sometimes because um, my experience says that the races are a mess. Um, the qualifiers, there's a lot of people get mad now when you get taken out. Can you imagine having, <laughs> you know, more, more qualifiers? Um, that's the problem with RC cars is you, there's no, there's no penalties really for hitting each other. So when, and, and there's no, no ramifications personally. Um, so the cars hit each other all the time. And when you start at once, you have to deal with that. You're, you're going to get taken out. People try to get the, the best start. And I think, I think that's what, um, not everybody's prepared for. I personally hate it. Um, I much rather qualify and run the main event, uh, whatever that is, whether it's a triple main or a single main, uh, I'd rather do that. Uh, I love the qualifying. I think that's to me, that's what I like to do. Cause I want to run a good, you know, whatever the length of the race is. I want to have my, uh, I want to test my ability against the clock. Um, I, that's the part I like. I, but I do understand how people like the heads up racing, but what I've seen is it creates more hard feelings than anything. And people complain on the internet now, uh, about, you know, rough driving and getting taken out, but that would be a way to do it. Like you said, easy way, take out if more qualifying, you got uh, qualifiers like that. You run the main event. Um, and that would be easy way to do it. But it wouldn't, he's asking if it would, uh, how can we do less qualifying? Well, yeah. Um, you would still have to reduce the number of, of qualifying rounds. Yeah. I think, at some point in this, you have to group the cars according to whatever the speed is. And, you know, what your, what your recommendation was just get rid of Ifmar, you start heads up and that there's all your races right there. Uh, so you're qualifying your first two races are qualifying. Um, but you're racing heads up with everybody. And then your main event, I think for what he's saying is, to do less qualifying, the only thing you could do is run shorter qualifying bursts just to get you randomized uh, a general area of where you should be. Then you start racing more mains. So instead of running two five-minute qualifiers, maybe you were you ran like one three-minute qualifier and it took your best you know, whatever the amount is, it took like your best 10 laps combined or something yeah. like that. Um, and then, so you did for three minutes on the track, it took your best 10 laps and put those together or average them or however the system works. And then that puts you into mains and then you race mains where there could be bump ups also. I like that. That would work. Then you would, ha then you would have more race, then you'd have more more races. Yeah. I think that's what he's looking for. Because my idea with the IFMAR, you're still running, let's say, three qualifying rounds. It's still a lot of qualifying. I think that that, that would work. What's that, what's yeah. Rudy do? The invite? What's he saying there? Well, you, you only, um, <clears throat> in the Reedy race, there it's only done by points. But it's essentially it's pre, you're pre qualified in that, so it really so if they have like this year I think they had twenty four drivers, uh, you know they have twenty four drivers at the Reedy race this year usually it's thirty, and so you, 
it, from that respect, you're already pre-qualified, right? Yeah, right. So it's just 30 guys only allowed, and then the heats and the grid positions mix up, and then it's then you race for points. Um, I mean, you know what's funny is most people love that format. They absolutely love the Reedy race. Um, I actually like the open class at the Reedy race where they do the traditional qualifying in the main events. The only thing I wish they did at the Reedy race is run three A mains in the open class instead of two. And I'm not a fan of the two, uh, the two mains. Oh, okay. I, uh, but it, it's worked out. I think the, for the most part, the better drivers have won and it's, it's been successful. <laughs> Obviously it's been successful. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like, I like that system, but yeah, I think we kind of, I think we kind of figured out a little bit of an angle there for him. You know, you, you shorten it out, you go three minutes on the, on the clock takes your best, whatever amount of laps you decide, uh, then it ranks you into a main and that's where you're, where you essentially qualify. And then from there you can either bump up to a better main or you get left in whatever main you're in and you race it out. So, and that was, that that would shorten the weekend too, right? Well, for a big race, it it may. Yeah. Or do you still run like, okay, Friday we're going to run and then Saturday we're going to run qualifying. Would you do two of those or? Well, um, there's a couple ways you could do it. You could run two separate programs, a one day, you could run through. You could have the the three minute qualifier. Uh, they, you know, they they set you up. Yeah, you uh, could do like uh, so. Like, let's say Friday, I ran a qualifier, and my three minutes totally sucked. And then, but then I could be like, oh, I got another shot on Saturday. Saturday, yeah. I do really good, and I have a chance. I have a choice to eliminate which one I, I want to eliminate. Like Friday. Mm-hmm. Like I'll eliminate Friday. Go with my Saturday times and see where I place. Yeah, it's that could be done. I mean, it's a, you know, what's funny is the race I just ran is pretty much the, the monster truck race. That's kind of how it works. And this thing is they take how many entries there are. And cause this is bracket racing. So you yeah. can do this, but uh, there is no qualifying. Uh, what they do is it does. They do a random sort uh, when everyone signs up, they do a random sort, and then the the computer gives you a number, and that's like your qualifying position. So, if you if the computer selects you as one or two or three, that's your number. So, uh, going into the brackets. So, really, the only and the only thing that that provides is say you're racing, you and I are racing. If you're ranked number two from that initial sort and I'm 10, you get lane choice against me. So that's how that would work. It, because in qualifying, if, if you truly qualified and you were two and I was 10, you would get lane choice. What are you looking for? A box yesterday that was delivered to me that I never got. Oh. Um, so yeah, they kind of what they do there is they kind of eliminate the qualifying. They go right into bracket racing, but they do it twice. They run two brackets. So it's actually it's actually a really fun format. So you we ran we ran retro, sportsman, and pro mod bracket one. Then we had a lunch break and they changed the track and we did it all over again. So really, there's two winners in each class per day. So I think that is actually something that people look forward to. That uh, because, like you said, if you get knocked out early or you had a bad first, you're like, okay, well, I'll you know I'll get them again in the second yeah. bracket. Uh, so I think that's a good system. I think they kind of uh, definitely on the money with that mm-hmm. with that setup. And the the part about this, which we don't have an off road racing, but there's no practice in this, so it's not like like when the first time you hit the track is the first time you drive the track. So it just sits there. You, you look at it and you, you know, (laughs) 
<laughs> try to figure out what you're going to do or how you're going to attack it. And Which is pretty cool. I like that. It is. It makes, and it makes your very first race very nerve wracking because you don't know how things are going to respond. We got Adam rails talking about how, you know, roar just announced that, um, essentially the, the, the 10 scale nationals, which was going to be at Mimi's there in Maryland has been uh, canceled or postponed. Oh, okay. So he's asking what they're talking about is since Maryland has some pretty strict guidelines that having it there at any time was going to be difficult for the rest of the year. They felt so, but they're leaving the door open. If another track wants to host it this year, that has a more open guidelines, um, that they're going to take that. Uh, they're going to go with it. So he's asking, you know, who else, um, where would I like to see it? Uh, oh man, there's a bunch of tracks. I'd actually like to see it. I would like to see it be held outside, but, um, from what I've heard, the rumblings aren't that it's going to be that they've given the option to an outdoor track. It's been given to an indoor track. So, um, I mean, the best tracks out there, I mean, I, I miss, I miss some all the time, but, um, hobby action. (laughs) is a great track, but we've had the nationals there like twice or no, has it been twice? I think just once. Anyway, uh, you know, Mimi's is the place that can't hold it. Uh, there's always OCRC who typically does, they don't do roar races just because it takes so much time and they have to shut the track down for a long time. And, uh, the hobby plex in Omaha, Nebraska, Alex Sturgeon, that track, uh, is probably the best suited to have these kind of races. They would actually be really well suited to do the worlds too. Uh, I don't think they'll do the worlds, but, um, that's a good location. There's, there's a bunch of others also. Um, but there's a new track. Al Horn's been kind of promoting. I forget the name of it right now. That place looks amazing too. Not to mention all the carpet tracks. They could have a nationals at. Mm. they haven't had a roar nationals on carpet yet. All right, so we got another question here. Justin Doyle, he jumped in and said, what eight-scale tires and compounds everyone needs in their bag? Uh, Reflexes, for sure. Uh, Blue and green compound. Detoxes in the same compound. It's hard to go wrong with those two options. And then uh, stalkers. I think those are the the three tires you need. You could probably get away with two of those. You could probably get away with reflex and stalkers, but yeah, the detox for that a little extra flexibility, longer mains, super groove, something. Pretty easy. Everyone's going to make the eight scale tire selection thing so difficult, but um, especially if you're an engineer, you're going to make it real difficult. But. So those are just like the all round tires to use at yeah. tracks. Yeah, like if, yeah, like I mean, between reflexes and stalkers, you could probably run those at eighty percent of the tracks. Um, I mean, we recently ran a test down in uh, Mills Pond, and and the track was there was actually really kind of matured with it was grooved up and everything, but we went through. We ran uh, teasers, triple Ds, reflexes, stalkers, blockers, detox, rehabs. We ran every tire. And then, uh, and you know, Jackson was doing the driving. Paul was, uh, Paul and I were either mounting or gluing or whatever. And all these tires were within tenths of a second of each other. Mm-hmm. And if you're good enough to take advantage of the tenths of a second, then that's great. But if you're not, you need to pick the tire that fits well with your driving and allows you to be the most consistent. And I think that's where sometimes people get a little sidetracked is they're like, 
they feel like their owl is missing out on something that's magical and walks on water and allows them to be, you know, just destroy everybody. But I think the reality is, is it's, it's tenths of a second difference between these things. And, uh, and sometimes the qualifiers and then the main events, especially in eight scale, are really long. So you got to find the right thing for you for a long period of time. And that's how you're going to maximize your results. But yeah, reflex, stalkers, detox. Uh, those have to be, at this point, probably the best tires uh, that we have. I can take a look here while we're we can just look right at the right at the tire category here on the old website. Eight scale buggy. So we got blockers, ellipse, stalkers, cosmos, teasers, rehab, little chasers, triple D's, detox, diamond bars, reflex. And what's on page two? Remix, chasers. Dirt webs, hybrids, and barcodes. So people ask us sometimes about tires. And they're like, are you guys more into 10 scale or 8 scale? I'm like, all right, so let me count how many we got here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 16 different kinds of 8 scale tires. So, and I would say all of them are, are, you know, they're small adjustments off of another, but those three I mentioned, pretty valuable. If you're racing indoors, the ellipse is another tire you probably should have, but most of the time you're not racing eight skill. You're not racing it indoor a lot. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention was the compounds. Blue and green, probably the most popular. If you're going to be on a super high or super hot outdoor track, you might want some one of the tires in like an aqua compound or like an R2, but that's getting pretty far into the game. You know, the other thing that, you know, it's, uh, you know, we had that, that, that bracket, our favorite eight scale tire bracket was on Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah. And the the reflex was the top choice. Oh. And and you know, it's for a reason. They work really well in a lot of different conditions and that's why it was on our list. <clears throat> so one. so is the uh, f uh foam inserts as complicated as they were back in the day? No, it's probably easier. In in 8 scale most of the time you just mount it straight out of the package. You put it in, you glue it up and you're, you're good to go. Um, you know, they kind of look, obviously for me and you, they kind of look like this. Mm -hmm. You put them in and you That's rock it. and roll with that. Okay. So there's no longer the two stage and the three stage. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was something that Trinity made a disaster. Out of. <laughs> we got a lot but, of heat for that. A lot of heat. Um, you know, the, the Proline ones were the first, the two-stage inserts. There was an inside blue one and an outside white one. And we had those for the Worlds in 97. That was a big, um, kind of a cool thing we had there. And they didn't want to sell them because they felt like it was too much work to glue the two parts together. And I remember talking to Kinwald about it and. I remember Kenwall was just, he would look at you with like the weird, you know, this face that was like, hmm? like you would say, well, they don't, I, you know, from what I understand, they don't want to sell them because it's a lot of work to glue them together. And Kenwall's looking at you like work, like if you want to go fast, you work. Right. Like he, it didn't make any sense to him. Like, he's just like, why would you not want to do it? And so eventually they started selling them and, Eventually, they got them glued, too, which was good for most people. Um, I don't remember if Trinity sold theirs glued or unglued. I think they're unglued. Unglued. Yeah. Unglued, yep. 
and then I think they eventually sold a glue too, right? You sold yep. like a glue to glue them together. It was like a contact cement or something. Yeah. We used to, we used to use Super 77 spray adhesive. Okay. Um, I think there was a Super 77 and then there was a Super 90. Let's see what it says. Yeah, there still is still still exists Super 77 spray adhesive uh, made by 3M. And if you want to make a mess and you want to do it in a hurry, this is the best thing to get. <laughs> I remember staying with uh, Mark Pavitas at you know, several races and we would be building these inserts with this. Well, because <laughs> I mean, people think that tires are tough now, but we're talking about 1997. I'm staying with Mark. We're running the winter champs. We would come, we came back to the hotel and we would spend, uh, the rest of the time from when you got back to the hotel until you went to sleep mounting tires and because then what the two things we did is we glued the f- inserts together. Mm-hmm. So we took the two stage, we glued the inner and the outer, uh, put them together and you had to let that, well, first you spray it, it's wet. You slide them together. Then they start to tack up and you kind of, you, you push them around the edges. So they, they, um, you know, stick to each other. Well, then we would cut them. Because then you you have to cut the corners, you cut the insides, you cut the outsides. That was your foam prep. Then we would glue the foam to the wheels. This is a 97. Yeah. We were gluing the foam to the wheels. So so you glue the foams together themselves. Mm -hmm. Then you glue the foams to the wheels. Then you turn your tire inside out, and you push your tire over the top of the insert so that you could assemble it because normally you put the insert inside the tire and then put the insert or the wheel on. Well, once you glued your foam to your wheel, you had to put the tire on a different way. So you put the tire over the top of the insert, then you glue your tire and then you're ready to race. Right. Um, so this is w- the prep we would do for the triple mains for modified truck. That was the whole. And I think, um, did I get, yeah, that's the year that I, I got, s- I got second a lot of times, but that was the year that I got second. Kinwald tapped me coming on the straightaway, I think. Um, I was leading, was I leading the last main? Yeah, I think I was leading the last main and Kinwald hit me. Anyway, um, (laughs) poor guy. Um, Couldn't just give me one. No. Couldn't just give me that one (laughs) winner champs win. Um, I don't blame him. Anyway, so <laughs> still hurts. Still yeah, that hurts. was the prep. That yeah, it does. So <laughs> that would be that would be the prep for inserts back in '97. And uh, people talk about oh, tires, a lot of work now. But it's like yeah, you know, it, it's um, it is. But see, back then, once we did all that work to the inserts and then ran the tires, you would only run the tires like once or twice, and then you're starting all over again. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about we're running a race that's the, the biggest race in the world. You know, as far as being, there was never a modified truck world champion. But if there was, that was the race that was the world champion of trucks. So not everybody had to do that, but that's how we did it. And then we ran them like two times, and then you're ready for another set of tires. Now you spend a lot of time getting your tires ready in the beginning in terms of it's really not as much work as that was. The inserts and gluing them to the with that Super 77, that was the worst. That was um, – so now you get ready, and then the tires are good for a long period of time because you're running the tread really low. So you kind of do some work on the front side right now, and then you run it out uh, later on, and it's just hard to take that out of racing um, because it has such a huge impact on the performance. But yeah, Justin Doyle, Reflex, Stalkers, Detox. If you're racing indoors, you need some ellipse, but he's probably not racing indoors. Eight scale. For the most part, blues and green compound. If it's going to be super grooved up and hot, you might need some aquas or R2s. That's about it. Yeah. Pretty simple. 
I mean, I even had two different monster truck tires ready for last weekend. Oh, yeah? I, I had <laughs> the blues. We sell two compounds, and I had both compounds. So I had golds, and I had blues, and we raced on dirt, so we ran blues. You race on concrete, you run golds. Kind of a simple wow. thing right now, which yeah. is nice. So that was a good, good answer to a question, I guess. A tough answer. Everybody wants the answers to be so simple. They're just not. It's like the our buddy here, Matt Mosier, commented on our thing. I he always asked me like these questions, and he thinks it's going to be so simple. I'm like, look, it's not simple. Like it's just, you know, it's like he he wants to ask me like, should I get the new B6? I'm like, well. What are you, where are you racing? Well, I don't know. It's like, well, you know, that's a pretty big part of it. Um, he, he'll ask me, Hey, should I get this or should I get that? I'm like, no, you wouldn't like it. He's like, well, how do you know? I wouldn't like it. I'm like, cause I know, <laughs> I know you wouldn't. I'm like, you know what you need to be racing? Dirt oval. That's what you'd be at. He loves the RC10 GT. That's his thing. Is he always comes back to that as being like his ideal racing was with an RC10 GT gas yeah. truck on an outdoor track. To him, was the best, and I I can't disagree. Yeah, he's it, not the only it one. A, it was amazing. Uh, it was a great great time. It was like a basher vehicle in a sense that was a great race vehicle that's what like gas truck racing was bashers were buying gas at the time gas vehicles <laughs> and the rc10 gt was just a great um timing was great and yeah i loved racing mine i it was amazing yeah the last time i raced it it was several years i mean it was, it was probably 10 years ago but the thing was great then it was it was still great so well, what, what makes that great over a Truggy? Well, Truggies are, are cool. And th- there's two different. I mean, are we talking about the 8-scale Truggy or the 10-scale Truggy? Oh, that's right. Well, we got 10-scale now. I'm throwing it in there. Because um, that one you were showing me, that actually was a 10-scale. Yeah. But I'm thinking like, all right, well, if I liked 10-scale gas truck back in a day, I, I guess I would like Truggy 8-scale. What the hell is it? You know, besides the size of them i mean yeah what's different about eight scale truggy versus gas truck is to me they actually they're almost polar opposites because four wheel drive eight scale truggies you can do anything with them they're the most amazing rc cars to race because you can drive over pipes you can get out of crashes you can do (laughs) backflips like you can there there you can do any you can do backflips while you're racing a truggy jesus like ryan lutz has done it he he has races where he's doing backflips while he's racing it because (laughs) like there's been races at like psycho nitro where they'll make a big front they'll have a big front jump section and you get so much air, like the way they build the jumps is they're wood jumps. So you would get so much air and then come down on the next one. And what he was doing is he would actually just hold the throttle on and do a backflip. And the thing <laughs> would actually like jump lower. So he would actually go in the air and it would be lower doing a backflip. And he would downside the next jump doing a backflip. And he would run a whole qualifier like that. They are amazing, Truggies. But the what people don't like, I think, where Truggy gets the growth is a little stuff. First of all, everyone loves buggies. I mean, that I would say 75%, 80% of the people just love buggies. But anyway, Truggy, the, the cost of the tires is tremendous on a Truggy. Um, it's, prob- it's, not, it's not twice the cost of a buggy. But it's probably, uh, you know, it's one and a half at least. And now they do last a long time. So it's just like anything. If you want to put a new set of Truggy tires on, you're going to pay up front. But if you get like our reflexes or something like that, 
you could probably run a whole psycho nitro blast on one set of reflexes if you really wanted to. But when it comes to competition, people have a hard time controlling themselves. Uh, I mean, there is no doubt in my mind that if Mayfield came to the psycho nitro blast and you told him you can only run one set of tires the whole time you're here, he would pick reflexes and he could finish the whole weekend probably with one set of tires and his results would probably be 75 to 85% of what he could do being unlimited. But, um, and most people could, could do that, but you can't, a lot of people can't help themselves during competition. And if, you know, you got your wallet sitting right there and you think you can buy some more speed, you're going to buy some more speed. That That's, that's what, people do i mean if whether you're racing real cars you're racing anything you tell somebody they can buy a little bit of speed and they're like how much it's just um so what happens with truggy is when people the competition gets to them and they want to buy more speed it costs it just costs more to do it in truggy um so but as far as like the first 10 minutes of usually the main events, Truggies are the best. They're so fun to watch. Oh, I love them. Um, Nitro Challenge. If you watch that, if you want an entertaining main to watch, if you have the patience to watch a 45 minute main, watch Mayfield and Dakota at this year's Nitro Challenge in the Truggy class. Okay. Um, awesome. I will do that. Those two guys were so great. And we, I think uh, Thomas filmed the whole thing for us. So it's on our YouTube channel, I believe. You, I think uh, Live RC has their version too. And uh, just what, how much they're pushing the trucks and what they could do on that bumpy track with the big truck uh, was fun to watch. Cool. It's Spencer and Ryan had a good race last year at the Roar Nationals too, where they finished. Ryan, you know, it was 45 minute main. Ryan never crashed one time, had good pit stops. I think Spencer had one bobble and dropped a pit on Mayfield and they finished maybe 15 feet apart. I mean, it was like Mayfield down the straightaway, win, Spencer down the straightaway. <laughs> like, I mean, that's how close it was. Yeah. That was a great race. That was the race I told. I told Ryan that uh, I wanted to get his truggy uh, when the race was over, and he didn't. He gave it to gave gave it to me. I I told him I said I think this is one at least you know I thought I think it's one of the best races you've ever ran, and I said I'd like to have your truggy. He's like, here you go. Okay, <laughs> I have the trophy too. Yeah, I just think uh, I, I love watching truggies. I think they look badass too. So, um, well, what about the ten scale side of it then? So these guys that like the, uh, the in the old days of ten scale gas, they're not going over to the uh, um, ten scale. So you're saying or the um, what? What I was showing you the four wheel drives. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> that class, the ten scale truggy. It started off, I think, doing pretty well, uh, and it, some interest was building. Let's see who did one. Techno was the first one. It yeah. looked cool. We made a body for it. Our ten scale wheels and tires fit right on it. That was great. We we made a new ten scale truck tire, kind of because of, uh, kind of because of that felt it would be needed but then x-ray made one which is the photo you had of the x-ray one um i've seen people run it at events i just think that it's not over it's not so the class isn't so over that it's making people choose it over buggies i think people are still choosing buggies over that so it just something kind of has to give, I think is the really the main thing is people feel like, Hey, I, I can't race four classes today. 
something has to give and I'm going to race two wheel and four wheel. That's what they're doing. They race 17, five buggy and 13, five, four wheel. Those are probably the two most popular classes in 10 scale. And that little, the little truggy is getting a little left out. Not that it doesn't sell. Uh, I think they still sell them. Uh, let's take a look here while we're talking. Uh, look at a main. See how they're doing. Let's look up techno. I see we're last on the list here. Browsing brands. Great. <laughs> um, hey, come on. If it's in alphabetic order, I get it. But anyway, um, here it is. Let's search by most Ernie, best selling. Ernie used to get upset at that back in the day in the magazines. Why isn't that? Why isn't our motor right in front center right there? In the mm -hmm. ad. <laughs> For like some of those uh, distributors, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, you know, that's that's the stuff you look at when you're in this business yep. is you, you're looking at, you know, why are we why are we being left out here? Why are we the ones? Then you realize somebody spends more money on ads than you. You're like, oh, well, that's probably the reason. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. That's why Trinity did so well in those magazines, you know. Uh, why is it not showing me? Okay, so Techno. Best-selling product from Techno. So their most popular vehicle on A-Main is still the EB48 2.0. That's their e-buggy. Then it's their short course is their second best vehicle. Then the MT410, which is like a little monster truck. I still haven't seen the little truggy yet. The best-selling thing they have on here is their shock pliers. What do they do? Rank them? Yeah, A-Main's got a really pretty cool uh, setup here on their site where you can search kind of by everybody's most popular items. I haven't seen the little truggy yet. Wow, still not showing up. Yeah, I'm just wondering, you know, because everybody wants, everybody would love, well, you know, we get questions in, hey, how come they're not remaking the RC10 GT? Uh, it seems like there is a demand for it. Mm -hmm. So, What would need to happen? There's two things that need to happen. One, we need to have more backyard outdoor tracks for 10 scale not eight scale tracks we need to have tracks that are like 120 by 50 or 60 that are for 10 scale cars only and then we need one of the manufacturers to make a new nitro two-wheel drive truck um with all the latest uh bells and whistles uh with the the ease of the old engine that we used to run the old OS. And then I think it would work because the, the issue at the moment is there's just so many indoor tracks and with the popularity of carpet and AstroTurf for the most part, they're all indoors. You can't really race gas indoors. Um, now, you know, we do it a couple times a year for these big events, but those are also big arenas like horse, you know, rodeo arenas or something. Uh, so that's what used to be so different is we had a lot of dedicated 10 scale outdoor tracks, which were perfect for nitro 10 scale truck. And then that truck came out and it was a huge success. All right. So I can't find where the little truggy is even in listed in the top six pages. So, Maybe it's not doing all that well. Let's look at X-Ray. So X-Ray, best-selling. I don't think I've ever seen this A-arm before. God, this thing is ugly. <laughs> X-Ray makes some ugly parts. They make some good working products and some good quality products, but a lot of their designs are pretty ugly. The style of their plastic parts doesn't do it for me. 
the I'm big on that. um the opinions and comments of J Concepts Incorporated are not those of, of Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this the worlds though that they had at their track that we did last year. I wish we could do it all over again. It was so good. Hmm. It was so much fun. Probably the best race I've ever been to. That and the Finland worlds. <clears throat> Those two are the two best races I've been to. So you like the worlds there again? Just just have them there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what? It's the track isn't really that great. It's everything else that. Yeah, the whole surroundings. Really it looked awesome. Yeah, and you know, if the track was a little bit different, then it everything would be just well, they got enough money to change it all up every time. Yeah, you would think so. I saw somebody practicing there the other day, and it's the same layout. <laughs> <laughs> not, I mean, not that you've been able to run though, you know. I mean. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna send you two parts. All right. oh, actually, I'll make I'll save them first. Oh, you can't do that on a main. They protect their pictures. No, oh, jeez. No, brother. <laughs> Just snap a pic of it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's one of the things anyway. Yeah, so to get that class, that's that's what we'd have to do, I think. So let's talk about this. You were you were saying earlier that you wanted to go to Axial Fest. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Talk, a, to, uh, us about this, talk to us about this uh, <laughs> relative new uh, endeavor. Well, I don't know. I talked about it on the show before. It looked pretty cool to go to. I mean, there was so many people there, and it, all those uh, the way these guys trick these things out and make them look real. I don't know. It'd be pretty cool to go see it at least. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I saw an ad yesterday for it. I think it's in July. July 14th or 15th, I think it was. Mm -hmm. But then I remembered about COVID and I said, ah, screw that. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. You're like, oh, no, that's not going to work. Yeah, I mean, I would come away with something for sure. But um, yeah, scratch that idea. You guys uh, send people up to that? We have in the past. We didn't do it last year because there was like, we we were trying to time out a project uh, to be ready and finished for that event. And it didn't really, it didn't really pan out. This will be one event that Jason will send me to. He'll be like, hey, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I totally would. <laughs> Throw me into the. I got, a, I got a truck, a truck in the mail heading to you. I'll be like, can't we do this next year? No, you're going this year. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so you've agreed to send me to the, the COVID, <laughs> the 2020 COVID axial. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Go represent boy. Get out there. There's a J concept shirt. Yeah, I, I uh there's a lot of those uh, kind of events kind of coming up. I mean they they draw over a thousand people at that thing. They had a yeah, I wanna say probably not last year, but the year before that I think is when they did really, really well. Well, I guess it depends where it's at. It should be uh interesting to see if that will go off as planned or is that the same location every time <clears throat> i think they moved it last year there had to be there was a um that's yeah, all part of a uh, horizon it is yeah it's uh axials owned by horizon right. now one thing that i um i was gonna bring up was kind of a racing item is uh, Cody Newmandal posted the other day that uh, let me, I don't want to miss miss state his question. Let me pull it up. His question was, what is more likely to be the next game changer in two wheel buggy class inboard suspension to lower the CG or front brakes to stop like a four wheel drive? Both of these are allowed, but not heavily explored. 
my thought that I had um, said it was a while ago I had mentioned was, or I don't know when it was. It's been a while that I feel that you could do the inboard suspension now, especially with the carpet tracks. I think we could do it. Um, and, you know, it has been done before. Uh, we talked about the old Schumacher Top Cat, I believe is what yep. it is. Yep. Front that door. had inboard. That had inboard front shocks, and it. I, th- I think that uh, let's look at a picture of it without the body here. Yeah, this the uh, the re-release actually has the front inboard shocks. It could be done, and I think you could do the rear. You could figure out a way to do the rear, um, and I think it would be great for the conditions that we race in now. And it just hasn't been completely uh, finished, optimized. Uh, The other kind of caveat in the whole thing is that Traxxas does have a patent on that type of suspension for an RC car. Oh. But I don't know if the patent may have ran out because it has been quite a while since they had that. Well, if they're listening but, now, it's going to be renewed. Yeah, they're like, oh, <laughs> got to get this going again. <laughs> Before uh, somebody comes out with it. So that would be the issue, I guess, uh, that I would have there would be, you know, this top cat used it at one time. And I think it could be done now, especially, uh, especially could be done even better. The issue with this kind of suspension is you have a lot of leverage on the shocks. And... You have to, the shock has to be incredibly uh, stiff. It has to be very, you have to figure out a way to change the damping by a lot to get it to work. Um, and I think it could be done, but. Because you had to run a, back in the day, you had to run a, a heavier shock oil, I think. Compared. Real, you have to run real heavy. Right. Because it has so much leverage on the shock when you have uh, this kind of suspension. And, you know, this isn't, you know, this kind of style, you know, of doing suspension has been around a long time. The, the other advantage is you can run an extremely, you can get a lot of droop with a very short shock when you do this type of thing. Because you can, yeah, there's a mechanical advantage you can get with the cantilever mechanism. So you can take like a one inch shock and you can stroke or less, and you can, you can get twice the amount of travel out of it uh, because of the, the, the mechanics of the whole thing. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. It just hasn't been done yet. Uh, The front brakes, as he's talking about, Oh man, I think that's even more complicated, but that's not really my thing. Um, <clears throat> but I, I just don't know. I guess it would work electrically or work electronically. And front brakes. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Is a two wheel drive, you don't have front brakes. You know, it only brakes with the rear because that's the drivetrain. But yeah, but how would you do the front? Well, you'd have to have some kind of, it would either have to be electrical or some kind of mechanical linkage. Mm. You know, there's, there's ways it can be done. You have to tie in like some kind of, uh, something in the the hubs. Yeah. What you'd have is, you know, uh, just looking at one of our cars briefly is, you know, you could have some type of, um, system that the axle comes through the hub. You either have a disc on there or you have some, some type of clamping mechanism that helps you clamp and stop the front wheels. Uh, personally, I don't think it would work. Like, I think you would spend an incredible amount of time trying to fine tune it. And it might not work quite how you would want, but I don't know. Maybe if you could in- include, um, electronics. So it's electrically, um, tunable while you're driving um 
that would be kind of neat. I mean, the other thing is, is do we really need to make two wheel drive buggies faster than that much more faster than they are now? They're already sometimes faster than four wheel drive cars. So if we had the advantage of front brakes also, we would be just that much quicker. Wasn't there an off-road car? Uh, Schumacher did the front laydowns, but didn't somebody do the, was it the Predator or something? The rear shocks were like this. Hold on, I gotta look at your video. Instead of like this. Yeah, yeah, it had cantilever front and rear suspension, yeah. Yeah, were you talking about, yeah, who was that? So we were, we were talking about the Schumacher car because it was a two-wheel. Yeah. But uh, that, you know, the Predator... Um, RC car. So this thing. That's back when Kinwald was running for him, wasn't it? Yeah, he ran like two, one or two races running this car just because he was pissed at Yokomo. Okay. So he ran the car a couple times and kicked some ass with it. He loved this car. He loved tinkering with this thing. This is probably a good photo. Let's see if I can get this one. Yeah, the the front had the lay down shocks, and the rear has the like you're describing that they um, <laughs> they kind of crisscross each other in the back. I remember racing against this car. I never, I don't think I've ever driven one, or I don't. This car was the was sort of the um, associated kind of based there touring car project the tc3 off of this car uh the predator because this was like the only shaft drive car kind of at the time so then associated based their touring car the tc3 off of this thing and they just had a tremendous amount of su success with that thing this car is badass even you look at it now and you're like dude this thing if they if you rebuilt this car today with today's materials, <clears throat> designing techniques, and took a couple of the gimmicks off of this thing, it would be this would be the car to beat on the on carpet for sure. And the there's people that would love it, the techie people would love it because it's probably the most like it's probably the most f one kind of RC car there is. Yeah, cool car. But I think the Associated TC3 was originally, the idea got going because, because of that. They actually made a touring car also. What's funny is they didn't have a lot of success with this thing as a touring car, even though it probably could have worked well. And then Associated made the TC3, and the thing was, like, super successful. Jesus, that like, car looked awesome, dude. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it is. The Predator it, X10. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, it's the most F1-y RC car, I think. Absolutely. And uh, the guy, uh, I think the guy that started that was called, uh, his name was Richard Weatherly. The way the rear shocks are, I think, is kind of the biggest, I don't know. I guess it probably works. It's just it's a little too gimmicky. Yeah, but that's what uh, Cody's talking about. We all want to have a gimmick. <laughs> Give us a gimmick. Yeah. Trying to get one of these things is not easy if you want to get one today. You know, trying to get one on eBay or something. Yeah, I when I googled uh, Kenwald um, Predator car, I noticed. Did his uh, come up? Yeah, and I noticed on RC Ten Talk. dot com, uh, somebody was in there looking for information on this car because they want to um, build one. Apparently. Yeah, there it is. That was this car from the Winter Champs. There isn't a lot of pictures of it. Somebody wrote, I believe this car was at the 96 Winter Champs. Probably. Yeah. In 1995, Kim Wald raced at Yokomo and had the 96 Nat 
and at the 96 Nats, he won with the prototype double X4. The famous race. Right. So we got the 96 Nats in there. It's funny how we can squeeze that in there. All right, so let's look at Kinwall's Predator. The big thing I remember about this is I remember he raced, uh, when he ran this race at Winter Champs, when he ran this car, I think it was Winter Champs when he ran it. Pavitas also ran with his Yokomo. And I remember Mark, the only reason Mark even ran is because Brian ran. And he was like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna try to torch him, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, man, Kinwald just did a number. <laughs> Kinwald did a number on him at that race. I was like, oof. And you know what? It, it really showed that the car had a lot more than people were probably giving it credit for. The one thing I do remember about it is it was embarrassingly loud. Hmm. It was so loud. <clears throat> the Predator. Yeah, it could be done. Yeah, so I think lay down shocks and then uh, given that, you could give it a shot. You could try the front brakes. I don't know. I, I don't know how that's going to work, but I think both could be done, but I think the shocks could happen first. But both things, the, the lay down shocks might actually cause the biggest redesign of the, of the whole car because you have to pretty much lay everything out different. Um, just seems like it would make sense though. I mean, you have, you, you try to keep everything's, you know, center of gravity, you try to keep it all low and then you have these shocks just sticking straight up in the air. <laughs> I know it does. It's, it's it like, always has driven people a little bit batty. Yeah. So coming up on the race calendar here, we got Paul, uh, he might be doing some carpet racing this weekend at beach line. We already talked about the hot rod shootout going on. It's so hard to say hot rod shootout because hot rod is actually a track in Southern California. So maybe he's just calling it the shootout. We'll have to look that up. But uh, yeah, so we got that going. We got a couple of other races. Our race, summer indoor nationals. I mean, we've just blown by so many months here. I don't, I don't think we're going to, there's some races we're just not going to be able to rerun. I mean, we've gotten so far past. Um, it's, it's strange. It's like all of a sudden we were in, we were in February. Things were kind of, you know, rocking around. Um, and then just everything just like changed. Like we went into all these, uh, into the pandemic and everything else. And I was like, just months are going by. Well, I'm hoping they could reschedule the eight scale Nats at LCRC and we can go and uh, have some fun. Hang I know I, that, that was probably the race that I'd heard the most positive, like um, they want to be there. They want to get there of all the events. And that's the one that's not, happening so we'll see if we can catch up we got a lot going on and what new products are shipping out this week from j concepts we got a brand new tlr 22 5.0 elite body we got the the p2 so many people have asked us for a, a punisher 2 p2 body and that is now out in shipping. We got an S2 body for their new four wheel, the 22X4. We got an S2 body for it. We got two new bodies to release next week. Um, oh, that throwback uh, RC10 body. Yeah, the B2. Yeah. That's out there. Got some the new satellite tire rubber bands in pink, white, and green. Tactic wheels and chrome. Colt wheels and chrome. So then we got the speed fangs, uh, pre mounted speed fangs for the speed run crowd. So we got a, good, some, a lot of good stuff out there. All right. 215. We'll see you. Rock and roll. Next week. All right. See you.
Later. Yes, you put it succinctly. Succ what? Succinctly, it means perfectly. Oh, yeah, man, I do that.